growing nervousness about the situation. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Yangon. Well, let's get more on our top story now. More than 3,000 people, mostly civilians, have been killed in U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan. But the CIA defends its program, saying it eliminates high-profile targets. And there have been some trophies for the unmanned reapers. An influential Pakistani Taliban leader, Mullah Nazir, was killed earlier this year. Last year, Al-Qaeda leader Abu Yahya Al-Libi was killed. In 2011, a drone strike hit Ilyas Kashmiri, a man accused of cross-border attacks. In 2010, Mustafa Abu Yazid was among the big Al-Qaeda targets who was hit by CIA drones. In 2009, Baitullah Massoud was hit. He was accused of masterminding the assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. It all began in 2004 with the killing of a senior Taliban leader, Nek Mohammed, in South Waziristan, who's believed to have had ties with Mullah Omar and Osama bin Laden. Well, Arash Aramesh is a Middle East analyst at the Stanford Law School, and he joins us now from Stanford. So, Arash, the U.S. says drone strikes are an effective way of taking out targets. What's your view? Uh, first of all, it is clear that uh, the, the United States is fighting radical uh, Islamist groups around the world, in particular in Mideast and South Asia, in, in Central Asia, with the purpose of uh, uh, dismantling and finally annihilating these organizations. These organizations include the Haganian Network, they include Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda in, in the Arabian Peninsula. Now, there is no doubt, and unfortunately, there is no doubt that these uh, drone strikes. Have had uh, have resulted in civilian casualties. The president mentioned that he addressed it last week. Uh, but in terms of how effective these strikes have been in eliminating their targets while keeping casualties, collateral damage, and civilian casualties very low, there is very little argument to be had there. And the number that's uh, the number that was mentioned earlier at the top of the program that 3,000 people, mostly civilians, have been killed. It is highly disputed. In, uh, in, in many circles. Uh, but okay. the program well, itself one, one has been One thing very that's effective. not disputed, what though, Ash, if, if I can just break in there, because you're talking about how it's effective in helping to dismantle these organizations. Uh, the problem is that they cause a lot of anti US feeling, and analysts say that that, in fact, leads to an increase in recruitment for these groups. If it's leading to an increase in recruitment, then aren't these strikes doing more harm than good? You, you cut off the head of the snake and three more grow? They perhaps create a sense of anger after these strikes have been carried out, but that anger has been there. The anger uh, and the anti-American uh, anti sentiments are exactly what have resulted, what have caused the creation of these organizations and have led to the recruitment of many young men in these organizations. Drone strikes are the U.S.'s last best option. Uh, the alternative is what? Is uh, putting boots on the ground, committing U.S. special forces to the ground. I guarantee you that's going to have a lot, more, a lot worse results. That's going to kill a lot more civilians. It's going to damage a lot more houses. It's going to have much worse effects. My uh, question for the opponents of the drone program is this. What is the alternative? We cannot obviously leave these radical elements and terrorist organizations alone. So what is the alternative? The problem is not the drone strikes. Again, the president has pledged to be much more transparent about the drones program, and he has pledged to actually uh, make sure that civilian casualties that are low now to be even lower. And that is a good thing, because even one civilian casualty is too many. Even one civil innocent dead person is too many. But what is the alternative? How are we supposed to combat al-Qaeda okay, well, or well, the Taliban uh, let's or the Haganian network or other radical organizations in Yemen, Somalia, and Pakistan. Uh, let's talk about the value of these uh, targets, because, for example, the, the, the latest uh, person killed, the second in command of the Pakistani Taliban, Wali Ur Rahman. Now, does he fall into the category that the White House says um, it will only use lethal force against uh, targets that pose a continuing imminent threat to the U.S.? Does the Pakistani Taliban really pose an imminent threat to the U.S.? The Pakistani Taliban seem to pose most threat to Pakistan. 
Uh, if you notice in the past, uh, in the post-1979 hostage crisis world, the U.S. Embassy has come under numerous attacks. Just in the past 10 years, U.S. Embassy in Islamabad and U.S. Uh, Consulate in Karachi, both uh, facilities have come under numerous attacks by organizations, including the Pakistani Taliban, that have claimed responsibility for it. They still pose an Im imminent and clear danger to the United States. They still recruit uh, individuals to fight, not only in northern Pakistan, but they also have clear ties with the Taliban in Afghanistan, and uh, they, they all share this wide uh, Salafi ideology that at the very core of it has this anti-Western, anti-American ideology, in addition to being a fundamentalist Muslim ideology. Now, do they pose a threat to the United States? Yes. Is it a good thing to take out the second-in-command of the Pakistani Taliban? Absolutely yes. Do we have to do everything we can in our power to reduce and minimize civilian casualties and bring it down to zero? Absolutely yes. So uh, these targets, when we find out who they were and which individuals they were, if in most cases, in almost all cases, they're individuals that hold positions of recruitment, planning, organization, and leadership in these organizations. What we have to focus on is civilian casualties and reduce them. And again, the drones program have allowed us to actually be able to operate and orchestrate these successful attacks while m keeping casualties at a very low level. What other option do we have? Arash, great to speak with you. Interesting stuff. Thank you very much indeed for that. Arash Aramash speaking to us from Stanford there.